This is the video lecture on variance analysis. Now one of the things that's very helpful to do in any company is to identify our standard costs. This is very helpful because this will actually give us a goal and a standard by which to judge our performance. Every time we make a unit of product, we should use a certain amount of materials, a certain amount of labor, and we should pay certain prices. And if we know what the ideal standard is, then we will be able to tell if we are deviating from that standard. Now the first thing we're going to learn how to calculate in this lecture is called a materials variance. And it's actually pretty easy to do the calculations. Really the challenge is learning how to properly set up the materials variance structure. So the way this works is that the far left hand side is always for the actual. And the actual amount is a function of two things. The actual quantity that was used times the actual price that was paid. And then the far right hand side is for the standard amount. And that's also a function of two items. The standard quantity that should have been used times the standard price that should have been paid. And then we have a midpoint. And that midpoint is a combination of both. And the way I remember the midpoint is that it's the very first item and the very last item. So it's the actual quantity times the standard price. That is the middle point. Now in between the first two points there will be a variance and it is called the price variance. And then in between these two points there will be a quantity variance and then between the two endpoints will be a total variance. So this is just the structure that we use to set this up. So to use an example, in this company they're manufacturing a product and they've identified their standards when it comes to materials. So ideally every product that is made should only require one pound of material and we should ideally pay ten dollars per pound. So in this time period what they actually accomplished was the production of a thousand units and they actually used 900 pounds of material at eleven dollars per pound. So using the structure that we just talked about we could set this up and calculate the materials variance. So the actual point they actually used 900 pounds of material at eleven dollars per pound so they spent nine thousand nine hundred dollars. Over on the far right hand side the standard point well they produced one thousand units we should have used one pound per unit or a thousand pounds times a standard price of ten dollars so that's ten thousand. Then we have the middle point which is the actual quantity but the standard price. 900 times 10 is 9,000. Now we can calculate our variances. Now there's one variance that's in between the first two points. You're looking at 9,900 versus 9,000. Well there's a difference there and it's a difference of $900. And that is an unfavorable difference. So we put a U which stands for unfavorable because they spent $900 more than the midpoint. That's unfavorable. Then we have a variance between these two points. 9,000 and 10,000. That's a difference of 1,000. That's actually a favorable difference because this is less than the standard. So we put an F for favorable. Then we have a difference between the two main points. 9,900 versus 10,000. So the overall total variance is a $100 variance and that's also favorable because we actually spent less than what we should have. So that's always a good thing. Now the value of doing this calculation is this explains a lot about our variance. Think about it. We should have spent $10,000. We really only spent $9,900. So we spent $100 less than we should have. Now why is that? 
Well, remember, we have a price variance and a quantity variance. This one is unfavorable. This one is favorable. So you can see what happened. I should have paid $10 per pound. I had to pay $11. Now, we don't know why that is. Maybe the vendor raised the price. Maybe we, you know, maybe the prices are just naturally going up. But that extra dollar that we had to pay cost us $900 too much. But look at this. Look at how efficient we were. We should have used 1,000 pounds. Our employees got the job done with only 900 pounds. So they were very efficient. So the quantity variance was very favorable. So because they were so efficient, it was able to overcome that $900 difference. And overall, we saved $100. So that's how you calculate and interpret a materials variance. Now we also need to learn how to calculate the labor variance. And again, it's all in the setup. As long as you know the criteria and the structure to set it up, then you can't really go wrong in terms of calculation. So on labor variance, the far left-hand side is the actual point, and that's a function of the actual hours worked, times the actual rate paid. The far right hand side is for the standard. The standard hours that should have been worked times the standard rate that should have been paid. And the midpoint, like I said, is always the first and last item. So in this case, it's the actual hours times the standard rate. In between the first two points, that variance is the rate variance. In between these two points is the efficiency variance, and then again we will have a total variance. So let's look at a labor example. For the same company, they've also identified their standards of labor. In ideal standard circumstances, it should take our employees one hour per unit to build the unit, and we typically pay them $8 per hour. Now what actually happened was they prepared and produced a thousand units, they worked 1100 hours, and they were paid 750 per hour. So now we can use that information to calculate the variance. So they actually worked actual hours 1100, actual rate 750, so we actually paid 8250 for labor. Over on the far right hand side, we should have worked 1,000 hours at $8 an hour, so we should have paid 8,000. And then the midpoint, actual hours 1,100, standard rate 8, that's 8,800. So what we have here are two variances and then a total variance. So in between these two, 8,250 versus 8,800, that is the difference there of $550. That variance is favorable. But in between these two, 8800 versus 8000, that is an $800 variance. So that variance is unfavorable because this point is higher than the standard. And then the overall total variance is $250. So what explains that variance? Well, we weren't very efficient. We should have been able to get the job done in a thousand hours. We actually worked 1100 hours. So efficiency is actually unfavorable by $800. But in terms of price, we paid them 50 cents less than normal. That saved us 550 on rate, but ultimately we are $250 unfavorable.